If you're a Muslim, at the end of this video, your trust in both Islamic scholars and your holy book should be heavily shaken. Assalamu alaikum everyone, I'm your host, the narrator, and this is my sidekick, Abu Red. Today, we will be analyzing a video by a popular ex-Muslim YouTuber by the name of The Apostate Prophet. I personally call it one of the dumbest hadith. Have a great day and stay away from Islam. Maybe it's time to tear down Muhammad right there, to stop using his name, to destroy this barbaric character. So we are going to talk about a pervert today, a person who created an entire faith. Hey Abu, can you fetch me the case file on our new target? <laughs> Thanks. Let's see here. So the apostate prophet comes from a practicing Muslim family, but was rebellious and liberal throughout his youth. And after some spouts of depression, Ouch. he actually thought it was a good idea to join an active communist organization. However, after some time, he decided to leave that organization and start practicing Islam. Not surprisingly, after a measly four years, he became an apostate. And as a result of all this, he's now apparently an expert on the subject. <laughs> you see, much the same as previous targets of this series, the apostate prophet is regarded as an authority on Islam simply because he's an ex-Muslim. <laughs> Therefore, explaining to his adulators why he's wrong is going to be a bit of an uphill battle. As you may have already noticed, I don't have the same privilege. Rather, I have to rely on valid arguments and evidence to make my case. But, to be frank, this episode is going to take very little effort. Perhaps far less effort than any episode prior or post. And how is this the case? Well, you see, about a month ago, the apostate prophet announced on his Twitter feed that he would be releasing a video apparently showcasing the ultimate demonstration as to why the Qur'an is objectively wrong and Islamic scholars, apologists at all, are all trying to deceive you. And eventually, said video was released. However, rather than being an ultimate demonstration of how the Qur'an is apparently wrong or Islamic scholars, apologists at all are deceiving people, his video was the ultimate demonstration of self-refutation. <laughs> In other words, the apostate prophet has literally undermined his entire channel through this video. Now, you don't have to take my word for it because I intend to prove this accusation. Yeah, thank you. But before we go on, let me state the objectives of this episode. Firstly, to show that the apostate prophet cannot be trusted when it comes to his understanding of Islam. And secondly, to show that the apostate prophet is objectively wrong about most of the things he talks about. Oh. Sorry. So without further ado, let's begin by examining his self-proclaimed ultimate demonstration, shall we? I want to show you how Islamic scholars, apologists, and translators of the Quran shamelessly deceive people that the Quran calls the moon a light, when in reality, the moon is neither light nor does it emit light. It reflects light. Sahih International, currently the most widespread Quran translation online. It is he who made the sun a shining light, and the moon a derived light, and determined for it faces. Whoa, do you see that? It says derived light, or a reflected light. Although it doesn't say such a thing in the original verse, it just says nur, and the word nur means simply light. Adding words in order to make the Quran look correct is a corruption. The apostate prophet's entire video essentially argues that because some scholars, apologists, and translators infer certain meanings from words in the Quran, specifically regarding the light of the moon, this implies they're all deceiving you and Islam is suspect as a result. Therefore, you should only trust the apostate prophet. How convenient. You see, there are a number of logical fallacies he's committed throughout his video. Among them is the idea that because one translation, i.e. Sahih International, appears erroneous, this therefore proves that Islamic scholarship in general cannot be trusted. But this is nonsensical and is known as the fallacy of hasty generalization, or a fallacy of jumping to conclusions where the key error is to overestimate the strength of an argument based on too small a sample for the implied confidence level or error margin. And yet another fallacy he's committed in conjunction to this is that such an erroneous translation proves that Islam is somehow false. But this is also absurd, and is merely an example of a non sequitur. You see, there is no necessary connection between the integrity of an individual and the validity of their beliefs. 
Just because someone fails to explain an idea correctly does not mean said idea is false. All it tells us is that the person or persons in question are either bad at explaining things, may lack sufficient knowledge of what they're promoting, or simply lack integrity. Oh. Sorry. O prophet, fight against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be harsh upon them, and their refuge is hell, and wretched is the destination. Notice anything odd here? Well, it should first be noted that the translation he's using for this video is Sahih International, the very same translation he's now accusing of deception. I would be considered an idiot and a butt. And secondly, although he rightly claims that the literal meaning of the word jihad is to struggle or strive, he makes a startling admission that anyone who does not infer beyond the literal meaning of the term is being dishonest. To bolster his accusation, he goes on to show a number of verses from the Qur'an. For instance, in the very first verse he mentions, he accepts the translator's inclusion of the word fight in brackets, despite the literal Arabic word for fight, or qatl, being nowhere present in the text. In the subsequent verse he shows, the word jihad is used in its literal form, but once again the apostate prophet assumes it's about fighting, despite the literal Arabic word for fight being absent. And in the next verse, he does something even more curious. He accepts the translator's use of the English word fight, despite the fact that the actual Arabic term here is jahidi. And in the final verse he references, yet another variation of the word jihad is used, but not qatl. You see, when it suits his agenda, he's perfectly fine with translators inferring more than one meaning for a term. However, when it does not suit his agenda, he goes on to condemn those exact same translators as being deceptive. Now some apologists even try to argue that the word nur, which is used here, could mean reflected light, or also means reflected light, or receiving light. But that's complete nonsense. The hypocrisy is palpable. Now to be fair, I think it's perfectly fine to infer more than one meaning from a word, especially if it's a general term. So I have no problem with someone translating the word jihad as fight when the context demands it. Likewise, I have no problem with the word nur or light including different forms of light under its definition because light is a general term that can include all forms of light. But remember, according to the apostate prophet, abiding by such a common sense understanding of language means you're being dishonest and your beliefs are suspect as a result. In summary, the apostate prophet has effectively demonstrated by his own reasoning that he himself cannot be trusted and all his claims are invalid. Now, I want to reiterate that I don't find the apostate prophet's reasoning convincing. I just find it amusing how easy it was for me to completely destroy his credibility in just a few minutes. Mashallah, brother! You see, the fact of the matter is, the apostate prophet is desperate to undermine Islamic scholars and academics through any means necessary. And why? Well, because he realizes that most scholars and academics disagree with his nonsensical views and he wants to bolster his image as an authority to his gullible audience. They should just shut up and obey. An audience that has yet to realize that the apostate prophet is simply cherry-picking the very scholars he claims you don't need in order to study Islam. But he does say something in another tweet that I happen to agree with. Islam requires a great deal of time and effort to study properly. But what it also requires is a great deal of integrity and a proper research methodology. Qualities which scholars of Islam and academics like myself are formally taught and obligated to uphold. Qualities which the apostate prophet clearly lacks. I can't say that with a straight face, no one believes that. But let's take a look at another claim in his video. That the Quran is supposedly scientifically inaccurate because it describes the moon as a light. Here, the apostate prophet further showcases his hypocrisy. The original Arabic text simply says that Allah made the sun a lamp, a shining light. No objection to that, although the Quran never reveals the true nature of the sun. But then it calls the moon a nur. Nur means simply light. So here, the apostate prophet has a problem with the Quran describing the moon as a light. However, he has absolutely no problem with the sun being described as a lamp or a shining light. But according to his own methodology, he should have a problem with the sun being described as a lamp or a shining light. Why? Because the sun is not a lamp or a shining light. Rather, it is a star that emits light. 
it is not a man-made object that holds a source of light, nor is it composed of electromagnetic waves. Rather, it is a natural object made of plasma. Therefore, according to the apostate prophet's own reasoning, he too is scientifically illiterate. <sighs> That said, I don't actually believe the apostate prophet is scientifically illiterate. Rather, I think the reason he agreed with the sun being described as a lamp or a shining light is because he understands the use of figurative language. However, because he lacks basic critical thinking skills, he did not attempt to apply that understanding consistently. But a question remains. Why does the Quran describe the sun as a lamp and a shining light, but the moon as just a light? Well, the answer is quite simple because that's how they appear in the sky. <laughs> Thus, there is no reason to suggest that this passage is meant to convey a scientific understanding of these two objects. Sorry, I, I, didn't, oh, I, don't, I don't feel very well. In conclusion, if this is the apostate prophet's <laughs> ultimate demonstration, <laughs> i.e. his best possible attempt at criticizing Islam, then there is little else I can say, but this. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, 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 and with all that said, I'd like to thank my viewers for watching. Until next time, Jazakallah khaira, Assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.